What's up guys, this is Afaq from Police Tech Networker. In this video, we're gonna discuss the enterprise automation for the N auto exam, the 300, 435 exam, what it is, how to prepare and pass the exam. So, the DevNet program as a whole has three different tracks, right? the associate track, the professional track, and the specialist track. So let's get into what those are and just sort of as a recap before we get into the enterprise automation exam topics. So the, the first one is the associate, right? So you, you pass one exam, which is happens to be the Dev Ask 200 901 exam, and you become associate or DevNet associate. Stepping up from there is the professional, right? And that's the, you basically have to pass the, the core exam, which happens to be in this case, the dev core exam. And then you pass any one of the concentration exams. So what are those exams? Uh, those are these exams, right? So any one of those uh, eight exams, if you pass along with the dev uh, core exam, then you become DevNet professional. Now, the third one, the third track is the specialist track. So there are a bunch of these 300 uh, series exams and uh, the kind of sub tracks that you can actually uh, pass the exam and then become a specialist in those tracks. So enterprise auto um, automation is the one that we're talking about here. But then there are seven others like SP auto, security auto, data center, collaboration, uh, DevOps exam, which is focused more on the DevOps tooling and, um, and DevOps ecosystem. And then Dev IoT and Dev WebEx exam, right? So those are the, the exam for the special specialist track. Now, in terms of the recertification for all of these three sort of tracks, uh, what you need to do is for associate exam, you just have to pass, uh, you can just go past the Dev Ask exam and, and you become the associate again. Now, remember the once you are certified in any of these tracks, your certification remains valid for the duration of three years, all right? So that's plenty of time. And obviously no one is, uh, is going to be recertifying anytime soon for because the DevNet uh, track or DevNet program is, is brand new. Another way to get recertified for the associate track is to just go past the core exam, the Dev core exam, right? This one. And then uh, you can also pass any of these concentration exams. And then you can also get recertified for the associate track. Next up from there is the professional. So professional exam, you basically have to, you can pass the dev core exam and then you can get recertified. Alternatively, you can pass any two of the concentration exam exams from this list, two out of eight, and then you can also get recertified for your DevNet professional certification. Uh, the, uh, the other one, the last one is the specialist track. So for this one, you can just pass one concentration exam, that's one option. The other option is to go and pass the dev core or the core exam, right? So as you can see, uh, there are no expert tracks for, uh, for the DevNet program just yet, right? There will be one in the future. Now, switching gears to the exam topics. So I thought it would be interesting and useful to compare the enterprise automation exam with the dev core 350 901 exam, right? Because it's in some ways it's sort of, uh, they're kind of the uh, equal kind of level exam. And I think uh, dev core is a good stepping stone, right? Because even when you're doing DevNet professional, uh, you are actually passing the core exam and then you are attempting one of the concentration exams uh, like enterprise um, automation exam. So, so first thing is that, as you can see, there are five sections in the dev core exam and there are six sections in the enterprise automation exam so software development design and using apis like that you have those two i think they pretty much closely match uh, the enterprise automation exams network programmability foundation and automation apis and protocols i would say they more closely resemble what you see in the dev ask exam like the these two sections but more from the dev ask exam sort of level why because remember that n auto is also a standalone exam that you can pass and become specialist 
uh, for the enterprise automation. So Cisco has, I guess, purposefully kept the, the knowledge level for the enterprise automation exam at the associate sort of level when it comes to the general topics like network programmability or software development design and also the using and understanding the APIs. So the next step is network device programmability. I would say that that's also a general sort of section. So it is kind of similar to Cisco platforms that you see on DevAsk and Dev Core exam. However, it's a little bit lightweight, I would say, uh, and just focuses on the device programmability option. And we're gonna go, go deep dive into it when I show you and walk you through the official exam blueprint in a, in a, in a few minutes. So the next after that are three sections, right? These three sections focus specifically uh, to sort of three different uh, product uh, portfolio or product options. So one is Cisco DNS Center, right? So that's the one, that 20%. And then the Cisco SD-WAN. And then finally, Cisco Meraki, right? So these are all 20, 20%. So basically this exam in some ways is like 60% here, right? And then this, uh, uh, these three, which are basically like 40%, right? So these, these, these are sort of set the stage, the first three sections. And the section four, five, and six is here where you basically put your skills to the, to the real use by creating some real world sort of, uh, you know, automation. So now my favorite uh, topic when looking at a professional exam is to do the job task analysis or JTA, just to sort of see if how closely that exam uh, resemble the task that you're supposed to do when you actually get a job for that uh, specific area. So going back to these uh, six sections, and then remember the, the, the split we talked about, the 40 and 60, right? 40% and then uh, 60%. So when it comes to automation, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, there are really three roles today, right? So obviously this will change because this is this field remains in flux. Uh, but there are three big roles. So one is automation engineer. Uh, and I covered this in another video, but automation engineer really is a role where you are basically a networker, like you are a network uh, networking expert, but you have learned some automation skills, like, you know, configuring configuration management tool like Ansible, a puppet, etc., or you know the the APIs like REST APIs, etc., and you're able to write some Python scripts, etc. Right? Some of those kind of skills. So now, if your skills are happen to be like related to iOS XC, iOS XR, NX OS, then then you are more on the enterprise side. Otherwise, uh, if if those are more to the DC side, like Cisco UCS or Cisco Storage portfolio, for example then is DC, otherwise if it's security, is security. So those are kind of three different uh, buckets or verticals that you can specialize on as a network engineer, the way I see it. So that's one role, all right? So this is one role. The second role is the network DevOps, right? So because in this role, you are basically someone who has, uh, who is the DevOps already or has been doing DevOps, uh, you know, in their day job. And then now you are basically added networking skills or knowledge and probably some experience to that and then now you are network devops right so and nre is a little bit i would say a specialized form of network devops right because they are folks who are more focused on the operational aspects of uh, networking like basically your your goal in life as an nre is to make sure 100 percent network uptime right that's nre so looking at these three roles now let's go back to the, the actual exam blueprint sections and see how they map uh, across these three roles. So network programmability foundation, I would say that is pretty common. Um, it's generally, I would say this one, I think is more for the network engineer, right? the NAE, automation engineer or network automation engineer in this case. Why? Because it's enterprise automation exam. And then automation, automated APIs, protocols, I would say that's also here. Uh, to a lot, uh, right? Because of general skills and then programmability as well. I think that's for NAE as well. Then if you go a step further, obviously, as we focus more on these uh, Cisco DNS Center, SD-WAN, Cisco Meraki, I would say that is 
pretty much across the board, right? So I think that this flows into all of these, right? So because if you work as a network DevOps and your and your enterprise, your company focused on deploying or uh, maintaining and managing a large Cisco Meraki install base, then you got to know obviously these things. So I think those are relevant to network DevOps as well as NRE. The next up is that sort of the kind of a deep dive into the enterprise automation official exam blueprint, right? So one of the things before we do that is I go through all of the blueprint uh, and I've, I've gone through that in case of the enterprise automation as well. And I pick those keywords that the all of these line items within the exam topics start with, right? So you're going to see like a lot of the line items that start, start with explain, describe, define, right? So those I consider as theory. And then some other line items that are more action words like implement, configure, verify, troubleshoot, etc. And I would say those are uh, the your hands-on topics, right? So if you go by this definition, then what I've found out is that the enterprise automation and auto exam is about a 50-50 split between these two theory versus hands-on uh, world, all right? So now let's go into the actual blueprint and see what we have here. So first section is we have 10% weight, right? It's because it's just like setting the stage, the first uh, thing. So it's, it is very similar as you can see to sort of the software design, uh, development design sections from DevAsk exam. So it starts off with utilize common version of Git, right? Git is the, uh, the your version control and, and that's obviously key topic to understand regardless of what track are you do you're doing basically for devnet then you have the understanding rest apis or api styles perfect good topic and then you have the describe the challenges encountered and patterns used when consuming api because when consume api obviously could be you could do it synchronously or asynchronously and there is a big difference between that and you need we need both uh, models then Understanding Python scripting, really very simple data structures, functions, classes, conditions like, you know, if, else, etc., and then looping, right? Like for loop and, and other. And then uh, virtual Python environments, explaining the benefit of network management tools, which is, I think, is a perfect topic and is, is a key topic for you to know because talking about Ansible and Puppet in the iOS XC uh, deployment. Next up is another 10% section, which is about the automation uh, APIs and the protocols. So JSON, XML, those are your two data encoding formats that you're going to be actually mostly using JSON, uh, but XML is good also to know. And then the Yang module, which is important, right? Because Yang is your modeling language. And that's the, that's obviously RFCs, uh, 8340, which means the ITF standard. So whatever you learn here, you could basically also use for Juniper or Arista uh, automation, as long as they have, you know, you're using the Yang model. Then comes up, uh, builds upon those topics and talks about the functionality, benefits, and use of open config, uh, ITF, and native. These are three different Yang models. It talks about those. And then configures, uh, then actually compares NetConf and RESTConf, right? Because those two are, I would say, fundamentals. And again, just like JSON XML, you're actually likely to use RESTConf most of the time when you are automating either Cisco infrastructure or any other um, infrastructure. Next up is a 20% topic, and that's the network device programmability topic. In this case, we're talking about a third-party library called NetMiko, which makes interfacing with iOS devices a whole lot easier. And I think it's written by Kirk Beyer. Uh, and then you have Python script using NCC client, which is uh, that is for iOS XC devices. Then you have configuring devices using RESTConf. As I said, RESTConf is, I would say probably like eight out of 10 times you're gonna be using RESTConf and also JSON as the data encoding format as opposed to using NetConf and XML. Then builds upon the Ansible, actually doing utilizing Ansible, like just kick some tires around Ansible and iOS XC. And then next up is really comparing public, public, public publication and subscription telemetry, if I can say that. 
and then two different uh, formats like periodic cadence um, and on change and let's keep going with this the next up in this section is describing the benefits of telemetry uh, so this is I this I consider more like an NRE topic right because we're talking about more uh, reactive or uh, basically more operational kind of opera operational topic than design or just deploy topic so then you have the day zero provisioning so you have ipixie which is cisco's pixie implementation for cisco platform pnp and ztp like zero touch uh, provisioning etc then the next three sections like section four and uh, five right they are basically focused on those three different uh, port, uh, part of portfolio so this first one is data center cisco dna center and this one talks about like you know traditional network versus sdn and then describing the features and capability of cisco dna center so very cisco specific obviously but you expect that because it's talking about cisco's enterprise uh, portfolio automating cisco enterprise portfolio as we go Further, it talks about web hooks, uh, and then uh, then you have uh, API requests for DNA Center to accomplish some specific tasks like DNA Intent API, Command Runner API, Site APIs, etc. And then finally, it talks about the API request to accomplish network management uh, task using the Network Discovery API and, and Template APIs. All right, and then finally, it talking talks about some troubleshooting. Uh, for the intent because intent API is the is one of the keys of the DNS center like this whole intent based uh, Network initiative that was announced by Cisco a couple of years ago. So then you have the SD van which was a Viptela uh, was the company that Cisco acquired uh, some time ago and SD van is basically Viptela solution. So it, it has these uh, management concept like for example one of the management concept is like we manage and then we manage has its own api like certificate management api is one of those and then you can see a whole lot of we manage which is the controller for sdn uh, we manage we manage and it goes on and on like that right and then finally troubleshooting and then cisco meraki which is i guess one of the very well known uh, product again another acquisition that cisco made a while back and then it has all these location specific MV sense. I think that's one of the key APIs you gotta know. Uh, and then external uh, captive portal APIs and then webhook, right, callbacks. And I think there are some other topic. Let's look at those as well. So creating a network using uh, Meraki APIs, right, which is super simple, really Python script and Meraki has an excellent uh, library, uh, native library for interfacing using Python scripts into uh, Meraki dashboard or creating, you know, dashboard API and creating network, creating organizations, uh, et cetera, or even uh, web hooks. So having said that, uh, we, we, we have this practice exam for enterprise automation that's available today on fullstacknetworker.com. In case if you're interested and you think you uh, already at the level, like you, you're ready to go take the exam, you definitely want to uh, give a try uh, one of these, uh, our practice exams because they will help you benchmark your understanding and really help you prepare to face the pressure uh, of the of a Cisco Rail Cisco exam. So now let's go into the learning plan that I put together for you guys. So learning plan is just really model after the uh, really just model after the actual exam blueprint. So you can see section 1.0 and then two, three, four, five, and six. All right, the next step I have is a complete breakdown of what the this each line item is about. Is that just a concept or theory line item or is it concept and lab? So as you can see, the learning scope is about, uh, I have each a line item there. Then I what I did is I thought it would be interesting to compare the enterprise automation exam for those, uh, like for example, with the DevNet Associate or Dev Core exam exams and then see give you guys sort of like a rough idea of what you're expected to be like sort of familiar with when you look at from uh, when you're coming from DevNet Associate or Dev, DevNet Professional Background. So in this case, the DevNet Associate, what I found out is that about 52% of the line items uh, or the exam topics actually are similar uh, 
uh, right, uh, as the DevNet associate. So if you are a DevNet associate and you're trying to at attempt enterprise automation e exam, then you can expect that you are probably going to find yourself be familiar with about 50% or half of the exam. That number goes up considerably if you have done DevNet core. So uh, because it, you, you can, um, you're going to find a lot more exams that you're familiar with. Uh, another way to say that is that if, uh, if you really want to go and attempt, like, like for example, you want to take on the DevNet uh, program, uh, you know, seriously, and you, you really want to advance your career, then I think the right way to start with probably DevNet Associate and then do DevNet Professional and then dive, dive deep into the specialist uh, subtrack, right? Because as you can see here, right, if that's the that's, that's most logical progression, because if, 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 you were, if you were a DevNet Professional, then you're finding Enterprise Automation Exam pretty much walk in the park because you already have, uh, you're already familiar with about 72% or three fourths of the exam. Finally, what I have also is learning resources. So these are just the URLs that I put together that you can actually click on and basically go and read. So these are handpicked, uh, which are specific to each line item, right? So there, they will be super useful to you. And then I put together against each line item, I put together the minimum number of hours that you're gonna have to spend for each line item, reading these resources, and maybe in some cases, obviously half of the case, you're gonna be doing some lab. And it will probably take you about 99 hours or 100 hours, let's say even, to, to really cover this whole subject matter and, and be ready to actually take the enterprise automation exam, the 300, 435 exam. So having said that, I hope that you found this discussion helpful. And until next time, ciao.